Another technology that the Steam Eagles Youth Group has managed to use is the hydroponics greenhouse farming. Here, they use soilless medium, such as rocks and volcanic soils, to plant crops which help in the mitigation of soil-borne diseases. The size of this greenhouse is uh, 8 meters by 15 meters. So for the two greenhouses, it's 8 by 30 meters. Uh, the technology we are, we are using here is called hydrophonic uh, system of planting uh, tomato or capsicum or you can plant even spinach depending with the uh, rotation that you want to use. But ours we majorly plant tomato and capsicum because they, they fetch more profit compared to the spinach. So the technology here we are using we have the troughs. The troughs basically are used to hold the roots. In the troughs, we put sand or we put cocoa pits, uh, coffee husk, uh, sawdust, so that they are able to hold the roots. Uh, number two, the troughs are used, are used to hold water so that the plant can take the necessary nutrients and the excess goes back to the tank. We, have a, we are using a tank of uh, 1,500 liters. That 1,500 liters tank can run this greenhouse for 21 days when it is wet uh, or when uh, the weather is not that uh, hot. But when it's hot, we use 1,500 liters of water uh, for 14 days. Then you can maybe replenish or you can uh, Use, you can add additional water in that tank. So our system here is uh, automated. We have timers, we have uh, pumps, we have the drip system. So basically what we usually do, we set our timers at around uh, very early in the morning or very late in the evening so that the plant might take the necessary water when it's not too hot uh, uh, and there's no that Hot sun. The production from hydroponics farming compared to the conventional greenhouse farming yields double as most challenges are mitigated during the setup. The production uh, compared to the conventional method is very high. One plant compared to the conventional method, we, we were getting around uh, between 10 to 15 kgs, but now we are able to get from 10 to 25 kgs per plant. So if you do simple calculation, that is an, uh, a plus for, for us. Uh, as esteem eagles, uh, this technology, we are embracing it, and even we are asking government to embrace this technology in dry areas, because they can save water uh, around 90%. Uh, if you can be able to use a water tank for 21 days or 14 days, and when you are using the conventional method, that 1,500 uh, liters tank will use it uh, for two days. But when you are using this technology, you are able to, to add additional 12 days. Okay, the production wise, uh, for this greenhouse, an 8 by 15 uh, greenhouse, we are able to plant 280 plants. Uh, 280 plants, uh, every plant we expect it to give us a minimum of 15 kgs. The material used in this kind of technique is the polythin, which has the soilless medium to plant the crops. The troughs, as I have said earlier, is basically used for holding water and uh, holding the roots so that it might not be contaminated with the soil. So ours we are using soilless media. The nutrients we are using, we usually put them at the tank so that the nutrients uh, keep rotating in the plants. The excess nutrients goes back to the tank. You can use the volcano soil, you can use the river soil, you can use uh, coffee husk, you can use uh, cocoa peat, so long as uh, it's not contaminated. For this greenhouse, we have used the uh, building sand. Uh, the sand, we bought it from a place called Taraka uh, because that is mostly where we get our, 
building sand in this region. We were applying nutrients at the tank. In 2018, we decided to do our own uh, innovation and see and compare how we can be able to improve the production. The kind of work that we usually do here is pruning. For example, this one, you come with a, a, a scatter, you cut this one, you remove it. Uh, this plant can grow to a, a height of around 8 meters since we planted. But since the production has uh, reduced and the market price is uh, low, we intend to remove it so that we can plant another plant. The cost of investment for setting up this kind of farm may get to an average of 750,000 Kenyan shillings for an 8 by 15 meter greenhouse incorporated with the automatic hydroponic system. Actually, one of the things that inspired us to do this kind of farming is the kind of technology we are using. Uh, ours might not be that perfect because this system requires that it is raised or uh, you lay a carpet down so that uh, there is no soil contam contamination. 8 by 15 currently by Amiran company I, I believe it's estimated to be three, 320, one greenhouse. So for the two is 640. For the system, is separate. The system, we install the system at a cost of 420,000. That is the trough, uh, installing the timers, buying the tanks, the drip system, even the sand that we are using. We have installed a CCTV that is able to monitor whatever is happening within this greenhouse. So the only work that uh, you'll find mostly in this greenhouse is when you want to spray uh, in case you have spotted some pest or when you are doing pruning or when you are doing scouting for uh, pests and diseases. In the use of hydroponics, a farmer can mitigate 80 to 90 percent of all diseases that are likely to affect the crops. You cannot eliminate uh, completely and depending with the crop management practice that you are using. The group has different methods in which they conserve water in their farm to sustain their crops. They have dug a well of 70 feet deep, which can hold water to supply the farm. The reason for digging this well, we had challenges of water. Uh, I had explained earlier there was a period we had planted uh, tomato in both greenhouses and all went to drain simply because the water was not forthcoming from the source. Our intention, we are planning to install a water pump so that the water pump is able to supplement the little water we are getting from the, uh, from the source, from the river source. The green pipe is the one connected to the pump. It's the intake, you can say it's the intake. It takes water to the greenhouse through the pump uh, it is connected to the electricity. We have the float switch. This float switch, uh, it, uh, the work of this float switch is to safeguard the pump, the water pump. Uh, this big pipe is the return pipe. As you can see, it's still dropping some water uh, since already it had uh, done the irrigation in the morning. The water is coming back, the excess water is coming back. Uh, this tank was full uh, two weeks ago. The water was full to this level. And you can see the kind of water that we have already consumed is very minimal. Hydroponics farming is important because of its ability to change the conditions of a plant, provide the plant with its specific nutrients while saving on water and ensuring a much more efficient growing cycle of the plant thus much more harvest. You can use it even in dry areas uh, where people don't know farming, you can use this system so that people can embrace it. Besides having good benefits from the greenhouse system, the yields received by the steam group were great, but the market prices were a big challenge due to fluctuations in the market. One of the challenges we have is the um, price, price in the market. 
immediately we installed this system. Uh, we were selling uh, the first crop, which was actually very good, and the people were even coming to buy from the greenhouse itself. They were buying at 15 shillings. It was a bit disappointing for us, but since we were trying our technology and we know we are still striving more and more, we, the market has continually improved with the time. But with good management practices, the greenhouse hydroponic system gives good returns on investment. Since we installed the greenhouse in 2014, we were able to repay the, um, the youth fund we cleared with them. We wrote proposal to willing partners. We have uh, a partner which came on board. They funded us with a grant of 420,000 and we were able to install this system. And now with the crops that we have grown, we have been able to break even. The group's vision for their projects. We are intending to partner with those companies so that we can be able to introduce this system to them. Uh, for our members, we, we intend to do a, a multiplier effect that every member of Esteem Eagles will have this kind of system. A wise man said, knowledge like air is vital to life. Like air, no one should be denied it. For youths who don't want dirty work or uh, issue of touching, they look uh, farming as uh, Kazia, Washosho, these old people. But for us, we, we are able to train youths that you can work in this greenhouse with this system. The way I look, you can see I'm uh, smart and uh, I will get here and get to the office without any dirt. So this system is very clean, number one. Uh, number two, we are able to train them that uh, farming uh, can be beneficial. You can be able to get uh, profit from farming. A good example, we have been able, as a Esteem Eagles Youth Group, be able to pay for masters for our members who have cleared the masters. And uh, that's a big plus for us. The adoption of conservation agriculture technologies and innovation can help crops adapt to changing climatic conditions and assure good harvest and returns for farmers. For more insightful stories on climate smart agriculture, tune in to KTN Farmers TV every Saturday from 7.30 to 8 p.m.